Welcome everyone. My name is Edilia Gens and I'm the director of Fedora. And I'm happy to welcome you on behalf of the Fedora board and team to this year's Fedora um, Prizes nominee online event that we are organizing especially for you as a great opportunity to meet the nominees live online and to discover the creative minds behind these very inspiring projects. Um, in the context of our competition, we also give um, capacity building opportunities to the nominees within our competition, meaning we help them build crowdfunding campaigns and matching funds strategies in order to boost the generosity of the general public towards their projects before we announce who the winner will be in June. So today we'll be celebrating and showcasing 15 nominated projects uh, that have made it to this step of the competition in the seventh edition of the Fedora Prizes. And each team will have 90 seconds to pitch either a pre-recorded message or live here with us today. This is, event is being live streamed as we speak on YouTube. So we kindly request all of you in the call to keep your microphones muted. Um, we will also have the possibility in a later moment to ask questions to the projects. Um, but I would first like to give you an overview of the projects that are with us today. So we have in total um, 15 projects that are coming from 15 countries with 60 collaborating institutions federating 90 artists who are working hard behind the scenes to make this happen and eventually reach the stage in the post-pandemic world. And at Fedora, following the example of the generosity of the prize sponsors, Generali, Van Cleef and Arpels, Carney, as well as a private foundation, we believe that philanthropy should be made accessible to everyone and everyone can make a difference by contributing as of only five euros to one's favorite projects on our platform. Every donation can help the project reach the stage and um, especially encourage artists to pursue their dreams in these challenging times. Another special aspect of these crowdfunding campaigns on our platform is that thanks to the collaboration with the Online Transnational Giving Europe platform, residents um, in Europe um, can benefit also from tax benefits for selected um, countries in our um, network. So when you come to our platform and you want to support nominees, um, this can be done regardless where you're based in Europe and if you're connected to the system. So these donations can be made until June 4th. And we're happy to also learn more about the system uh, from uh, a special guests who will be speaking in a minute. Um, and just to tell you where we are in this competition. So right now we are uh, giving the nominees the possibility to raise funds across Europe until June 4th. And on June 17th, we will announce who the lucky winners are during our award ceremony that will be hosted online. And I wish to now, um, hand over to our president, Mr. Jérôme François Isnis, who has prepared a message for you all. We are happy to showcase today the 15 innovative projects that have been nominated by our jury and got over 25,000 votes from the public. This special online event offers the artistic teams the opportunity to pitch their projects allowing us to learn more about their planned work. And this means a lot to us, because we think it is our responsibility to help artistic works reach the stage when opera and theatres will be allowed to reopen. Therefore, we encourage everyone to donate to the projects of their choice. Cross-border donations within Europe are made possible thanks to our close collaboration with the Transnational Giving Europe network, and especially through the newly developed online platform with the support of the Swiss Philanthropy Foundation and the King Baudouin Foundation, and with the co-funding of the Creative Europe Programme of the European Union. Together, we can support today the opera and dance creations of tomorrow. We are sincerely grateful for the support and trust of our principal sponsors, the Generali Group, Van Cleef and Apples, Kearney, and a private foundation, as well 
As for the collaboration with our expert partners, Opera Europa, Reseo, and IMZ International Music Plus Media Center. We wish also to thank the Creative Europe program of the European Union that helps us to showcase innovative opera and ballet projects while reaching out to new audiences and donors like today. We will now have a right. word from Barbara Gessler, Head of Creative Europe, DG Education, Youth, Sport and Culture of the European Commission. The European Commission is very happy to continue supporting Fedora because it brings together artists, cultural organizations, but also the audiences, very importantly, and private and public funding so that new works of art can be created and brought to the stage, in this case, opera and ballet works. Fedora also has the specialty of finding new business models and encouraging new and innovative ideas to help the ecosystem grow and stimulate its development. And therefore, I'm very curious to discover with you and congratulate the nominees for the Fedora Prizes in the area of ballet and opera of 2021. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing them and discovering them maybe, hopefully, in a post-pandemic world on stage. Congratulations to Fedora and to all the artists that have been nominated. I wish you a lot of success. We're very grateful for the support of the Creative Europe program. And uh, we will now hear uh, some words from Ludwig Forrest, who's head of international philanthropy at the King Boudouin Foundation. On behalf of the Transnational Giving Europe Network of the Swiss Philanthropy Foundation and of the King Baudouin Foundation, thank you for allowing me today to say a few words about the European online giving platform that was co-created together with Fedora with the support of Creative Europe. One year ago, I had the pleasure to announce you the launch of this platform that for the first time allowed donors in different European countries to make donations to beneficiaries in different European countries. This online with the tax advantage for the donors in a very simple way and in a secure fiscal and legal way. Since then, the platform has created big interest among beneficiaries all over Europe that want to use this to allow their donors to support them with the tax advantages um, all over Europe. And one example is the WHO Foundation that used the platform to uh, fundraise towards their efforts against COVID-19. Now, the platform is again open to the nominees of the Fedora Prizes, to you, so to allow you to reach out to your donors all over Europe, donors that are, will probably be inspired by your creation and that hopefully will want to support them with gifts and donations. Please use and abuse about this facility. At the Transnational Giving Europe Network, we will remain at your disposal at any stage if you have some questions. Thank you to Fedora for this collaboration since a few years. Um, thanks to this, the platform will not only serve your nominees, but the platform really allows more philanthropy all over Europe. Thank you for that. Good luck. And after these welcoming addresses, I am very pleased to announce that Fedora is launching this year for the first time 
a uh, matching fund initiative um, on behalf of Fedora together with very generous donors towards the nominated projects. And we have been able to federate um, 10,000 euros that will be made available as matching funds for selected nominated projects, um, meaning that one uh, euro donations per project of these nominated projects will be matched with one euro from our very generous matching funders. So stay tuned, uh, because at the end of the pitch sessions today, we will inform you who is backing this um, fund and uh, what nominated projects will benefit from this matching fund backing. So um, we're really looking forward now to hearing the pitches. And my uh, colleagues, Solène, Muge, Hélène, and François, will be moderating the pitches. And at the end of each category presentation, you will have the chance to put forward a question either through the Zoom chat or on the YouTube chat that we will put forward to the artistic teams. And we will now start with the digital category. And I am happy to hand over to my colleague, Solène. Thank you, Edilia. We will indeed open the pitching session with the digital category. With the support of Carney and in collaboration with the IMZ International Music Plus Media Center, the Fedora Digital Prize encourages digital innovation in opera and dance on and beyond the stage. Today, we will hear from four nominated projects. Out of the Ordinary by Irish National Opera from Ireland. Solastalgia by Poznan Opera House in Poland. Totality in Parts, a reenactment by Royal Swedish Opera from Sweden, and then Opera on Brainwaves by Muzia Zeni from Belgium. So let us begin with by hearing from James Bingham, outreach producer of the project Out of the Ordinary. James, the floor is yours and you have 90 seconds. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Solon. Um, yes, my name is James Bingham. I'm the studio and outreach producer for Irish National Opera, and I'm really delighted to bring to you um, Out of the Ordinary, which is a new uh, opera that we're working on. It's the world's first virtual reality community opera. So by a community opera, I mean an opera that is, uh, is brought to you in collaboration with a number of communities across Ireland. We're working with residents of an island called Anishman, which is off the coast of Ireland in a very rural part of Ireland, working with residents uh, living in uh, Tala, which is a district of Dublin, um, very urban area. But we're also working uh, with a collection of secondary school students who are dotted all over the country as well. So we're working with a variety of different communities to try and create a new uh, work of art that is of interest to them as well. Um, we're doing this as a virtual reality opera and what I mean is that's an opera that's made for one of these, a virtual reality headset. Um, there's two reasons why we're doing this. Firstly, artistically, it's extremely interesting. There are many things that you can do in virtual reality with it being such an immersive um, medium that you simply can't do in any other art form. And it's interesting to see how we can maximise those things. The other reason is that we take our remit of national in Irish National Opera extremely seriously. and We want to reach as many parts of the country as possible. And so working in virtual reality means we can get to places in the country where typically we can't because there aren't the theatres and bring opera in some form in an extraordinary circumstances to, to, to places uh, around the country that wouldn't have that as well. So it's really exciting to collaborate with these communities. Uh, when we first conceived this project, which was back in 2019, um, I very much saw this as being quite an interesting and experimental project. But I think given uh, the recent history that we've had around the world, it's become a lot more relevant in recent years. I'm really excited to see the methodology of this whole project extend forward into future projects. I think it's entirely feasible with the work that we do here to see other opera houses take what's the learning that's happened here and co-create their own community operas with people around the world and collaborate with people that they may have never met or have never otherwise come in contact with. And um, thank you very much for your time. Thanks James for uh, bravely kicking off the, the pitches. So we would like um, actually now to share with you a pre-recorded message from Rafael Zapala, composer, and Michel Kravsak, librettist of the project Solastalgia. 
Solastalgia is a project stretched between the world of the internet and reality. It is an opera about our generational experiences connected to the climate catastrophe. It is also about the uncanny and difficult emotions associated with it that spread worldwide through digital networks. It will be a unique hybrid of contemporary instrumental techniques for orchestra, singers, choral parts, and experimental electronic tools. Technology is our natural creative environment and here we assume extensive use of live electronics and retro electronics like old synthesizers like this prehistoric Oberheim, hack game interfaces and so on. Our goal was to create an opera that would be participatory and introduce new forms of interaction as social engagement. Solastalgia materializes when the viewers become its participants, feeding each part of the opera with fragments of their own emotions and stories. We want to create an entirely telematic opera. We have the form of an interactive website as well as of a smartphone application considered as a collective musical instrument. Furthermore, the implementation of augmented reality will allow the participant to move to specific points located within the real city. Solastalgia is also a spreadable manifesto, asking questions on how we can get out of our bubbles and do actions for the planet as co-creation act. So that was Solastalgia by Posen and Opera House. And we will now welcome Lukas Stimulak, choreographer of the Swedish project, Totality in Parts a Reenactment. Lukas, you have 90 seconds and we will this time actually warn you 10 seconds before the end. Thank you, Solen. And uh, Go ahead. Hello, 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 everyone. A uh, few years back, we created a theater performance, Totality in Parts, for the Royal Swedish Ballet in Stockholm. Now we would like to develop the idea further by creating an intimate spatial installation. We are proposing an interactive installation where the viewer's movement controls the installation and creates a highly immersive visual experience. Spatial sensors capture the movement of the viewer and the custom-made software uses cutting-edge machine learning technologies to create unique, real-time video interpretations of dance. This is a completely new way to experience a dance project. We prepared a large-scale visualizations which interpret the original dance piece and the visitor guides this interpretation. In addition to a physical installation, we intend to create a mobile web app that makes the experience even more personal. And this new, the new reality of the post-pandemic world calls for, for alternative ways of engaging with dance. This new work will visualize the piece in a new manner by revealing the patterns that the bare eye can't see. The Royal Swedish Ballet, Mekmoxen Foundation, and RNDR have joined forces. And now we ask you to help us. With your donation, we can make art more accessible and reach out to a larger audience. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucas. That was Totality in Parts, a reenactment by Royal Swedish Opera. Last but not least, um, Elise Kalivats, singer and co-creator of Opera on Brainwaves, will now pitch her project. Elise, the floor is yours. Hi, um, let me start by saying how exciting this is. So my name is Elise kelly -Wertz. I'm an opera singer and I perform all around the world. Um, together with tech fashion designer Jasna Rock, we are creating a project called Opera on Brainwaves. Um, opera on Brainwaves is a boundary pushing artistic collaboration which connects the world of opera, technology, fashion, and innovation. Through a new extraordinary high-tech piece connected to an EEG brainwave sensor, we'll be able to show the real emotions of an opera singer live in front of an audience. Um, we will be combining the beauty of opera with cutting edge um, brainwave technology so as to create an augmented empathic experience. Since the audience will be able to see the live emotions of the performers, it will create a new form of nakedness and vulnerability on stage. Composer Christian Jost is writing a piece especially um, for this project. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. So now it's time for the Q&A. And um, if you have any questions for the project, 
please write them in the chat and we will also check if we've received any questions from um, the YouTube live stream as well. I see one question for out of the ordinary. Um, James, the question is, how will you provide these remote audiences with the tech required to experience the opera? So yeah, I'm guessing cool. what is the experience for the audience? Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's a, a perfectly um, a valid question there. Um, uh, the way that the, the, the project will work is that in the summer um, of 2022, um, we're going to be presenting this opera and it will take the form of a tour. So uh, our ambition is to go right around the country with it. And, and, and the, the piece, whilst um, typically when we go on a tour, we need a large theatre space for that to take place. It's going to be a lot more flexible with this piece. So we can get into all kinds of spaces um, that are open to the community and I'm fully intend to do so. Um, so in theory, there may be a version that can be downloaded by people who happen to have the tech, and that tech is becoming more and more um, widely available. But the main way that we're going to be distributing this is going to be via a tour where it will be extremely accessible to people and it will be uh, as it can be presented to really anywhere. Um, and we'd also look as well, I think, going on to, to, to bring it internationally for that same reason. Well, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we've received another question from YouTube, actually for Elise. And the question is, Elise, in the long term, do you intend for this technology to be integrated into contemporary works or the classics as well? Um, so for this production, especially, we are working with um, amazing composer, uh, Christian Jost, who you might know from recent works in Deutsche Grammophon and stuff. So he is very enthusiastic about writing a piece, especially for this project. The technology itself actually creates a greater empathic experience. So what, what it does do is um, because you see the emotions of the performer on stage, you will feel very empathetic towards the performer, um, which is highly interesting because as opera singers, we always sell the big emotions. Part of that is constructed reality. Part of that is absolutely real and things you feel. So we're actually exploring um, that field. And, and because it's an augmented empathic experience, um, I think I might answer your question better by saying that um, it is something that will also be implemented in uh, normal clothing afterwards. So it's a technology that lives on, but we have a premiere with opera. I see. That's quite impressive. Thank you. Um, well, if there is um, no other question from the audience, um, we will wrap the digital category. And we hope that some projects caught your attention. So we will now move on to the education projects that are moderated by Muget. Good afternoon. We will now hear the stories behind our education projects. With the support of a private foundation and in collaboration with Reseo, the Fedora Education Prize aims at boosting social integration and intercultural dialogue through opera and dance. Today, we will hear from all three nominated projects that are Carmen and the Other Extraordinary Woman by Albero in Italy, Dance Training for People with a Disability by Platform K in Belgium, we Are Musicians by Stara Zagora State Opera in Bulgaria. Let's start with uh, Carmen, the other, Carmen and the Other Extraordinary Woman, represented by Carlo Peretti, cultural designer and researcher. Carlo, you have 90 seconds. Thank you very much. I'm Carlo Ferretti. I'm Carmen, and I'm a woman. I know what you're thinking. I'm a man, and definitely I'm not Carmen. But, you know, in theater, we have the possibility to say whatever we want. Men have always had the possibility to say whatever they want. Women don't. 
So today I'm going to take my freedom to say loudly, Carmen is a woman like me. Indeed, in our project, um, we created a safe space for all, a space for disabled women and for artists, for opera professional from the north to the south, for students and for migrants, an accessible space where everyone empower each other, uh, uh, sharing their, their knowledge and sharing their stories and co-creating an order. This is our process. It works on every engaged people projecting um, an impact, a social impact that we measure through a social impact evaluation methodology. This is the reason why our process is scalable, which means it is adaptable to other communities. This is the process we used to call a community opera. Now we are done with it and we are ready to produce the opera. That opera is Carmen and the other extraordinary girls. It needs your support in order to be staged. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carlo, right on time. The next nominee project will be pitched by Oscar Stelpert. He is a dancer from the project Dance Training for People with a Disability. We will now together watch their pre-recorded video. Ik ben Oscar Stampaert. Mijn naam is met de K geschreven en ik ben 25 jaar. Wat ik vooral wil zien is een performer. Wat houdt dat in? Danser, um, in teksten schrijven, acteren. En daar zit het vooral in, maar ik ben ook een danser in deze regio. Plaat voor elkaar. En wat is er daarvoor nodig bij Plaat voor elkaar? De training, zeer belangrijk. Dat is met yoga, onder andere toonstechniek, creatief zijn in een creatief atelier of laboratorium. Um, maar zelf heb ik ook een training begaan met Plaat voor elkaar, maar ook op het totaal ander terrein voor een voorstelling. Namelijk de korte variaties. Ik heb daar een hele goede ervaring op gedaan. Alles voor podium, alles voor dansers. Dat is Oscar Stampaert. Thank you very much to the team Platform K for sending us this beautiful video. Um, we actually had a representative of the project, Annalie spoke with us today, so if you've had... had we, love that. we both used to live in Glasgow, not at the same time. Or, no way, really? Yeah, there was a... Technical... Okay, I think I'll continue. So I was saying we have a representative of the project, Annalie spoke with us today, so if you have any questions, please feel free to put them on chat now or on YouTube. We will be answering those questions in a few minutes. We will now invite... Mircea Christoph, Head of International Collaboration and Grants from the project We Are Musicians, the last nominee of this category. Mircea, the floor is yours. You have now 90 seconds. Thank you, Mirge. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited for the opportunity to share our idea with you, as well as why we would like to make it happen. It came after I've read a research paper published in the Translational Psychiatry Journal that music might be a potential therapeutic aid in autism spectrum disorder, given music's universal appeal and ability to modify brain and behavior. With this project, we would like to create the first sensory-friendly opera performance in Bulgaria that would be suitable for children and youth with autism, Down syndrome, ADHD, and other challenges. More, with the musical workshops preceding the performance, we would like to spread the word about the positive influence that musical intervention can bring such as improved social communication and functional brain connectivity. There are no sensory-friendly performances in Bulgaria so far. 
Young people with developmental challenges basically have no access to performing arts, and we want to change this. We want to help young people with special needs, and we believe classical and opera music are a great opportunity to do so. If you find that idea worthy, please support us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mirjo. I would like to check if we have some questions from the audience. So I'll start with uh, Carlo. We have a question for you. What kind of workshops will the women do during this, perform this uh, program? Well, um, first of all, we we uh, already like work on the community or the communities, as I told before, and we actually work on the creation of the dramaturgy, uh, the co-creation of the, the, the dramaturgy of the opera and the musical parts. The, the the good stuff I think for the process is like uh, involving all the people, even like in uh, uh, playing the instruments. So it was like a, a really high level of co-creation and I would like to say adaptation uh, in the intent of producing the opera. So what we are uh, going to, to plan for the next part is like the design of the costumes, the design of the stage, the design of, uh, uh, the, the, of the performance itself uh, that uh, is connected with the, the dramaturgy and the music. So uh, everything will be co-created. Every part of the opera will be co-created. Uh, and then of course, uh, performed and played. Thank you very much, Carlo. Well, uh, the next question is for Annelies, if you're with us today. Trying to see if Annelise is here. Yes, I'm here. Hi. So our audience is wondering how many dancers have benefited from the program and how many more can you support thanks to these donations? Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, several dancers in uh, dance training. So we have uh, two beginner uh, groups. Uh, those are groups of about eight to 10 uh, people with a disability. Uh, and then we have the advanced uh, level. Um, in the advanced level, we work more individually. Uh, that's uh, the, the dancers also um, that we call La Compagnie, uh, the, the, the company of Platform K. They perform in uh, dance performances with uh, dancers without a disability. Um, and uh, the advanced dancers are uh, about eight to 10 also. We also uh, like to reach a lot of, uh, uh, a lot more dancers. Um, by uh, the Fedora campaign, uh, because we uh, raised a lot of uh, votes. Um, a lot of people uh, got to know Platform K uh, who didn't know it yet. So we have a lot of new uh, people who want to do audition and who want uh, to, to attend the dance training. Wonderful, let's hope that we can reach as many as possible. Nietzsche, actually the same questions for you. Our audience is wondering how many children will benefit from this program? Well, we are experimenting and uh, trying to find the best possible way to engage as much uh, children and youth as possible. And we really rely on our partners. Our uh, research indicates that there are about uh, actually more than 100 kids with children and youth with special educational needs in our region. And they are our uh, main focus. Uh, we believe that most of them will have the chance to enjoy the performance, but we also hope that we'll have at least uh, 20 of them who would be uh, actively taking part in the musical workshops. And we would try to see if uh, the musical work would give any positive psychological results on them as well. Wonderful. Well, we cannot wait to see the impact of this was the end of the education category. We will now move on to the ballet projects moderated by Helen. 
Thank you, Miguel. Uh, I'm indeed very happy to uh, introduce you to the to this uh, wonderful prize category uh, that, with the support of Enclave and Arpa Prize for Val, uh, with the support of Enclave and Arpas and the collaboration of Opera Europa, this prize category awards innovative dance creations from promising teams of emerging artists. And today we will hear for, from four nominated projects. Coppelia in the Digital Age by Edinburgh Fe International Festival in Scotland. Remonda by English National Ballet in United Kingdom. Pippington La Visita, working title, by Fondazione Teatri Reggio Emilia in Italy and Hotel by Birmingham Royal Ballet in United Kingdom. We will start by hearing from Coppelia in the digital age. Uh, and we are very happy to share with you the video trailer of the project with a presentation of Jessica Wright, director and choreographer, and Caroline, Caroline Donald, head of learning. We also have Sadie McKinley with us, she is the head of development of the Enderbrook International Festival, and she would be happy to answer any question you may have for her. Hi, I'm Jess of Jess and Morgs, and together we are going to be directing and choreographing the new version of Capelia for Scottish Ballet. We are really interested in kind of putting the technology like front and centre on stage with the dancers. You know, the original ballet is based on a guy who falls in love with a doll. Um, but if you think about the world that we're living in today, our version of our doll is this kind of highly curated image that we're constantly putting out of ourselves on social media. At the Edinburgh International Festival, we strive to make our performances as accessible as possible. Dance is a very visual. Um, art form and it can be quite difficult to make that accessible to those with a visual impairment. We work with world-leading audio describers and run an opportunity for those with visual impairments to connect with the performance through a touch tour and through an audio description experience and these work together and complement each other to ensure that they have the best possible experience of the performance. We are delighted to have been shortlisted for the Fedora, Fan Clef and Arpels Prize for Ballet. Your donation would enable us to reach more people to share this innovative and exciting new production of Capelia. With your support, we can bring this ballet to life in 2022 for all of our audience members. Thank you. This is very inspiring. Uh, the next nominated project is Raymonda. And today the project is represented by Patrick Harrison, Executive Director of English National Ballet. Patrick, I'm very happy to give you the floor for 90 seconds. Thank you very much, Hélène. Um, thank you um, for letting us speak today and, and hello, everybody. Um, I'm Patrick, I'm Executive Director of English National Ballet, and I'm really pleased to be able to speak to you today about our Artistic Director, Tamara Rojo's adaption of the spectacular ballet classic, Raimonda. Marius Petipa's masterpiece, Raimonda, contains some of the most spectacular classical choreography and the most beautiful music ever created. Tamara Rocco's debut work will reimagine this classic and reclaim the storyline, giving the eponymous character Raimonda agency and authority. The setting for this new work is the Crimean War, and the inspiration for Raimonda is Florence Nightingale, the pioneer of modern nursing. In Tamara's own words, I want to address how women are represented in the classical canon. The roles are usually victims waiting to be rescued by the hero. Raimonda will be a very different role in command of her own destiny and making her own decisions. The production will premiere at the London Coliseum in January 2022, and it's a co-production with Finnish National Opera and Ballet. I also wanted to just highlight that it's a creation that will generate vital work for the arts sector. Not only English National Ballet's own dancers and musicians, but over 60 freelance creatives and 15 independent companies will be commissioned to create the production. Please do have a look at the Room on the page on the Fedora website to find out more, including how you might like to donate. Supporters will be given exclusive insight into the creative process, and we would really like to share more with you if you're interested. 
So thank you to the Ballet Jury and to those who've already committed to support and of course to everybody at Fedora. Thank you. We will definitely go and visit your page on our platform. Thank you very much, Patrick, and right on time. We will now hearing from Pipping Tom La Visita, uh, with the working title, represented today by Gabriela Carizzo. She is artistic director of the Fondazione I Teatri Reggio Emilia. Gabriela, I'm super happy to give you the floor for 90 seconds as well. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, Gabriela Carrizo from Pipping Tom. And uh, the project La Visita, we will create uh, especially for uh, La Collezione Maramotti in Reggio Emilia. So it's the first time we create a, a, a work, a performance in a specific space. Uh, like in, in a museum. So it's a way uh, to enter into a relationship and a confrontation with the space and, and the art uh, uh, already present in, in the museum. And rethink and question in the way we, um, we see things, we, we perceive things. Um, I will bring existing characters uh, from other works by Vipin Tom specifically from, from Mudder. So we I will relocate these characters and, uh, and to follow their story uh, in the museum. Um, the, the, they are characters in the museum, in the daily life, in the organization of a museum, like the uh, security guard, the cleaning lady, the, the guide of the visit. So, um, the, these characters uh, are already there and they were created in Mudder. So I, I, I give them another life. We continue the life beyond the, the play, beyond the theater. So um, we, we're going to be confront to this intimacy, to, to, the, to the drive of, uh, of their conflicts, how they see the, the, this space. So the audience will not be simply spectators, but visitors of an intimate experience. Huh? How, how the image and the bodies reveal, reveal to us um, yeah, the, the, this uh, intimate drive of those people. That for me, these characters are silent witness of the museum. You know, it's, it's a social uh, aspect also of the... Of the, of the yeah. Thank you very much, Gabriela. The time, the time is running, <laughs> um, but thank you. I think your, your pitch was really complete and uh, we are very excited as well about your project. It's, uh, it's an amazing one. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, the last project that we will discover in this prize category uh, is Hotel, represented today by, by Matt Freeman, Director of Development of Birmingham Royal Ballet in United Kingdom. Matt, I'm happy to give you the floor for 90 seconds. Oh, I think we can't hear you. Mm -mm. No, it's not working. Maybe you can try to disconnect and quickly reconnect. <laughs> Maybe in the meantime, I would be happy to already ask some question to uh, the three projects that are in the room. Um, if there is any in the chat box. Uh, Matt is back. Do you hear us, Matt? I hear you. Do you hear me? Ah, uh, wonderful. Yes, we do. Hello, <laughs> we still everyone. have your night to see again. No worries. Lovely. Thanks, Helen. Uh, Matt Freeman uh, from Birmingham Royal Ballet. We are one of the UK's three Royal Tattered Ballet companies. Our director is the amazing Carlos Acosta. Um, he, we're a company known for big, spectacular classical works, but we have a huge commitment to new work, uh, and ever more so with Carlos. Uh, and hotels, one of those, one of those shows. So delighted to be in the shortlist. So why is Hotel important? Why is it worthy of support? Well, it represents lots of firsts uh, for us. The first time we were working with the amazing choreographer, Morgan Renegade Temple, and her partner, Jess Wright, who I saw was also involved in the Edinburgh International Festival uh, pitch. Um, it's the first time she'll be working with the incredible composer, Michael Carlson, 
Uh, first time we'll be working with young uh, designer Sammy Fendel, extremely exciting designer winner of the Nimbri Prize for Stage Design, fresh out of college, great opportunity for her and for us. Um, but it's also a big first for the company in that the way we use the digital technology around this piece. So the dancers, one of the elements that will feature is the dancers will have cameras on their bodies. So as they're moving around the stage, moving in and out of the, the sets, the hotel, the interior and exterior, they'll be filming uh, what's in front of them. This will be projected onto their costumes, onto the stage, onto the sets, and it will be integrated with pre-recorded live, uh, pre-recorded film. So it will give a sense of, is this real, is this not real? adding to the ambience of the, of the piece. Um, we're really excited about it. There are elements to it which won't be possible without support. So um, please do take a look at our page. Thank you in advance for, for your support. And we look forward to seeing you there. Is that about 90 seconds? Right on time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much also for being here uh, with us. Um, it was uh, a pleasure to hear your pitch um, after this suspense. And now I just see that we received a question. Uh, actually, it's for you, Gabriela, and the project La Visita. Do you intend this revisited museum experience to be transposed to other collections? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's the first step, you know, and it's so questioning, it's so, it's so uh, exciting, you know, this project. And of course, I think um, this is the... Um, the following step, uh, I mean, we have a project with Kain the Museum of uh, Fine Arts in, uh, in Belgium. So to, to see how this project can, can develop, this is the idea. This is a very good idea. And uh, I really believe that it could be a strong uh, project for other collections. Uh, I didn't receive any other question in the chat box, maybe from the from the YouTube. Uh, I have a question for uh, Sadi. Are you still with us uh, about the project Coppelia? Hello, Helen. Yes, I'm here. Hi, hi, Sadi. Hey. Um, so the question is, um, how would you animate the automaton? You're asking me this question that yes. I cannot answer. <laughs> yeah. I think this is one of the reasons, um, actually, obviously this production is for 2022 and we're not that far ahead with the artistic and um, technical production side of it. We're pitching our fundraising on, on tonight around the Edinburgh International Festival presentation and the accessible performances. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that question with you. No worries, it's just more suspense for the, the <laughs> audience to, to keep uh, to be to be updated on your page. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Thank you, Sadie. Uh, I think now we will uh, move, move on the, the other prize category and the last one of the day, which is the opera prize category. And I'm happy to leave the floor to uh, Francois, who will moderate this session. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so with the support of the Generali Group and in collaboration with Opera Europa, our expert partner, the Fedora Opera Prize awards innovative opera creations from promising teams of emerging artists. Today, we will hear from four nominated projects. We will start with Innocence by Festival d'Aix-en-Provence in France, then Celle Venice Dunkelfield by Lod Music Theatre in Belgium, then we'll hear from Like Flesh by Opéra de Lille in France. And at last but not least, we'll hear from Elsewhere by Straymaker in Ireland. We'll start the pitches by hearing from Mr. Pierre Audi for Innocence. Mr. Audi, you have 90 seconds. Hello. Um, nice to talk to you about Innocence. Innocence is a work that was commissioned a few years ago to one of the greatest composers, Kai Sariaho, uh, Finnish composer, who's written many operas before, but this work constitutes a departure for her. And um, I've been lucky to be involved in many commissions in my life. And the discovery of this work last year was an enormous revelation to me. It's a very personal work. And like all the great operas that we still play today, the, the works are all very personal, have come out of the psyche of the composer and 
mean something very personal to composers. The construction of this work is remarkable. The risks that are taken in the mix of talents that are on stage, singers and actors, is uh, incredibly powerful. And it's an evolution of the music theater of Janacek that marks uh, a big change for opera in the 20th century. Uh, the music is of an enormous richness in color. We shall discover it this summer with the orchestration. And we have with Innocence, in my view, uh, a new masterpiece to add to the, uh, uh, to the operatic legacy uh, that we, we are fortunate to work with. And I would urge you absolutely to uh, support this wonderful work, which we look forward to uh, revealing this summer. Thank you very much, Mr. Odi, for your time and for presenting the project. We're all very excited to discover it. Um, we'll be now um, um, discovering the project Zelf West and Dunkeluvierd by Log Music Theatre. And unfortunately, Jamie Mann, the composer of the project who is supposed to be with us, um, had a problem and cannot join us. So I will try to tell you uh, and to fill in for her and to tell you more about the project. It's an invitation to travel to the limits of the seeable, the hearable, the comprehensible, and to imagine the truth of the world which lies beyond perceived reality. It's chamber opera by British Chinese composer and director, Jamie Mann, and Swiss author, Peter Stamm. And they want Zell to reach an international audience, to have the chance to ignite more questions about the way we question and you know um, listen to the mysterious connections which lie uh, beyond skin deep, and they welcome anyone who'd like to join this quest and to support the project. We will be now moving on to Like Flesh by Opéra de Lille in France, and I'm really happy to give the floor to Cordelia Lin, the author of the project. Cordelia, you have 90 seconds. Hi, thank you very much. Um, like Flesh is a subversion of Ovid's metamorphoses. It is a dark contemporary myth informed by queer politics and environmental sciences. Environmental destruction is the great existential challenge of our times, and Like Flesh is not afraid of artistic activism. We believe opera can encourage self-reflection and demand radical change. After all, to survive, we must transform. Like Flesh is a radical love story. Trapped in an unhappy marriage, a woman finds hope in an unexpected affair. But when a moment of passion instigates a surprising metamorphosis, a student and a forester lay claim to her new body, one for money and one for love. The score for Amplified Chamber Ensemble and Electronics imagines transformation through new technologies. Advanced modeling of biological growth patterns creates a visceral experience of the growth of fungi, moss, and roots. These textures will be diffused through the unique setup of 64 speakers throughout the hall, gradually transforming the space into a living environment. Director Sylvia Costa and artist Francesco Labraccio have created a design enriched by artificial intelligence. AI recomposes, morphs and produces new images in an uncanny mirror of natural processes. The stage now offers a site for a new landscape, transformed by projected AI imagery, which will be trained with a thematic data set from the libretto. We invite you to explore the world of musical, the visual and musical world we are creating for this urgent and timely opera by visiting our Fedora page and to discover our wonderful multinational creative team and cast. And finally, we would like to thank Fedora for this opportunity to share our opera with the wider world at this time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Cordelia, for this very ins inspiring pitch. And um, we can all wait to discover the project and to make our uh, audience discover it. And to conclude this um, pitch session, we will hear um, a pre-recorded video by Michael Gallen, the composer of Elsewhere by Streammaker in Ireland. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Gallen. I'm the artistic director of Irish music theatre company Streammaker, and I'm the composer of Elsewhere, a new opera which is being produced in partnership with French ensemble Miaz et Tendu, and with the Abbey Theatre, which is Ireland's national theatre. The project brings together an exciting international artistic team and will premiere at the Abbey this November. Elsewhere is concerned with themes of freedom, mental illness, and the radical nature of care. 
It's inspired by the true story of the 1919 Monaghan Asylum Soviet, when the staff of a psychiatric hospital in small town Ireland barricaded the gates and declared their independence, treating the patients as equals in a collective working structure. The events and elsewhere unfold through the memories and visions of a patient named Celine, who decades later remains frozen in time and juxtaposes her incarceration with that brief moment of hope when it seemed like another mode of living was possible. The opera has a cast of seven singers and ten musicians, all of whom are on stage and form part of the architecture of Celine's vision. At its core, Elsewhere is taking a sensitive look at one woman's experience of being marginalised, but it also draws colour and warmth from imagination and bold collective action. This is an opera for our current moment and encourages its audience to imagine what a truly care-centred society would look like. Thank you. What a nice pitch and Michael is actually present uh, in this call. So if you have any questions for him, um, feel free to write it in the chat box uh, in the Zoom call or on YouTube. Um, I see we have received already one question for Like Flesh. Um, so the question is, how can Like Flesh change mentalities on how humans deal with their natural resources? So Cordelia, do you want to answer? That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, can art affect change in people? I mean, I would like to say yes. I think that's important. And that's why we do what we do and why I do what I do. Specifically with Like Flesh, um, Like Flesh uh, looks at a woman who turns into a tree and uses that as a metaphor for how we relate to our environment. So these two people have a relationship with the tree. It's quite radical. It's quite strange. They continue after the traditional climax of transformation that you have in Ovid's Metamorphoses to tell this story. And by showing how these two different people, her lover and her husband, respond to her new body, it talks a little bit about how we have this very destructive as well as this very loving relationship with the environment. And hopefully it would allow people to reconsider their own relationship with the environment and with our natural resources. Well, we really hope it gets people to act upon this urgent matter. We have received another question for Innocence. And um, Mr. Audi, um, um, the question is, what are the biggest challenges um, that came up when creating this multiplet opera, this um, thriller opera? What were the, um, the biggest challenges, I guess? Do you understand this? I suppose the, <clears throat> the answer to this question should be given by Kaisayahu herself because we have uh, begun the process of staging it and uh, the challenges of creating it were, I think, a very personal uh, alchemy for Kaya herself in delving into this subject and trying to, to write it as if her life depended on it. And that's what you hear. And I think the challenge is to precisely, um, you know, find in yourself as a composer that essential music which uh, tells the story and, and expresses every word of the libretto, every emotion, every piece of subtext and succeed in making that uh, perception happen on a score and then later to have it interpreted by uh, singers and a director. And I think that's the great mysterious journey that any composer takes in writing an opera. And I think the biggest challenge is to hope that what that process, which took years for Kaya, will then come through in the final performance in those 90 minutes that the audience will experience the work. And that's the mystery of opera and the challenge and the beauty of bringing to life a new work, bringing a new work into the world. And we're very excited to see the accomplishment of this uh, very intense and poetic journey. So I don't see any, um, any other questions. So I'm going to give the floor back to Edilia um, to um, um, a few announcements. Thank you very much to all of the projects for being with us and for having sent us 
um, your pitch. It was extremely interesting to follow, um, uh, to see what you're working on and what inspired your work and of your team. Um, and as my colleague said, we're very much looking forward to supporting you on this journey and to bringing your work um, uh, to international audiences already in this process of making the project re um, be realized. Um, we have now a wonderful um, surprise for you all, um, especially in these times where um, any funds are needed and an, are an encouragement while we wait for the stages to reopen again and the curtain to rise. Um, we are very happy to provide you with a jump start support of matching funds, which will be provided um, over the upcoming months um, and that we are uh, will be continuing to grow um, uh, as the days pass, but we want to already announce today the 10,000 starting funds that we will be allocating to selected projects. So thank you for all of you and to, to those of you um, watching on YouTube. Um, we will now announce what projects convinced with their pitches and will be receiving um, some funds. And I would like to start by thanking Secutix, who is our corporate donor mm -hmm. and who is the global ticketing engagement platform um, in Europe, um, who is going to provide matching funds for one project per prize category. And today with us is Christian, Mr. Christian Binelli, who is the COO of Secutix, um, who will be sharing with us the selected projects who will benefit from this startup funds. Um, I'm just checking to see if we can pull you onto camera. It's okay. Christian. Ah, oh, fantastic. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Edilia. Thank you very much. It's not an easy job for us to choose and the congratulations to all the nominees first. Thank you all for the very interesting pitches. Uh, um, as a corporate donor of Fedora, we share the belief that the heart should be made accessible to all the main people. And we help the new to set up and we try to help the new to set up a user-friendly ticketing solution. It's what we are currently doing. So with the venue closed due to the pandemic, uh, we strongly believe it's its uh, utmost importance to current artists to to continue creating a new work that will reach the stage in the future. Uh, we at Securitix, we therefore to pledge magic fund to one project of each category to double the first 1,000 euro collected by the project. And uh, now stop the teasing, perhaps the name. So uh, at Securitix, uh, we have chosen for the category Fedora Opera Prize Innocence Festival d'Aix-en-Provence, France, which I know quite well because I'm based in Paris. For the category Van Cleef and Apple Prize for Ballet, it's La Vista, Fondazioni Teatri Italy. For the category Fedora Digital Prize, totally in part, Honor Notmand, Royal Swedish Opera, Sweden, of course. And last but not least, for the category Fedora Education Prize, then training for people with a disability platform key from Belgium. Together with Fedora, we are looking forward to seeing those uh, experience in real life as soon as possible. Thank you very much and congratulations to all once again. Thank you, Christian, so very, very much. This means so much to us and especially to the entire community of artists out there who are going to benefit from this encouragement. And we're looking forward to um, providing your funds to the projects so that they can encourage generosity from the general audience who can make donations on our platform. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate it. Also on behalf of all projects who will also, um, I'm, I can imagine, will be reaching out to you in, um, to say thank you. Um, so thank you for being with us today, also in person. Um, I am now happy to um, go to our next uh, corporate member, which is Drooms, which is the leading provider of virtual data rooms in Europe, who will also provide matching funds to one nominated project. Um, and we have a special message from Mathieu Leroux, who is the marketing communications manager at Drooms. And here is a message and he will tell you who will benefit from the support.
Hello, everybody, and thank you all for the inspiring pitches. As a corporate member of Fedora, Drums shares the belief in the important contribution the performing arts have on our society. Important, fruitful dialogue between technology and culture is as important as ever in such a period as the one we are all experiencing right now. By working with Fedora, Drums has found a way to promote artistic talent and to support a European collaboration. The two entities are distinguished by their support for cooperation and the search of excellence. We therefore share a basic building block of essential values. Both Drums and Fedora are platforms for capacity building. Drums in the field of data rooms, digital innovation, and due diligence. Fedora through Europe in the arts of opera and ballet. We, at Rooms, therefore wish to pledge 1,000 euros of matching funds to double the first 1,000 euros of crowdfunded donation towards the project Coppelia in the Digital Age by the Inderborg International Festival in Scotland. Digitalization is part of our DNA, and it definitely made sense for us to go for that one, and we wanted to support them. And together with Fedora, we look forward to seeing this project come to life. Best wishes and good luck to all participants. Thank you. So congratulations. Thank you very much to Drooms, and congratulations also to the project and the entire team at Edinburgh Festival. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the project come to life. Um, and this brings us to our corporate member Variations International, which is an expert in supporting companies in the evolution of their organizations, um, who will be providing matching funds to the project We Are Musicians by Sarah Sagalowska's Opera in Bulgaria. And we are um, very much looking forward to um, seeing how this project will evolve um, over the upcoming months and building an impact for children with special needs and disabilities as we have heard, a pioneering project for Bulgaria. Um, and a great thank you um, we would like to send to Catherine Tano and Paul Delay, who are um, the president and managing director of Variations International, who are um, with us today, who followed the pitches but cannot uh, be with us to make a presentation, but who send their warm regards and will be also in touch with the project quite soon. Thank you for this generous gesture. And this brings us to another announcement. So those were the corporate uh, members who um, were very helpful um, on providing matching funds. And we also have a community of individual donors who followed your pitches. And there will be um, also, in addition, um, matching funds available for La Visita of Peeping Tom. And um, also, again, for uh, We Are Musicians from Sarah Sagora State Opera which will be also um, feeding your campaigns. And a special thanks to the individuals who have been backing um, this matching opportunity. This brings us to the conclusion of today, which was uh, made possible by all our supporters, the European Commission, the prize sponsors, our founding members, um, the foundations backing us, um, of the Swiss Philanthropy Foundation, the King Gunduan Foundation, um, who are providing also the transnational giving system that is enabling cross-border donations to um, your projects, our expert partners who helped pre-select um, and were part of the nomination phase, um, and all our corporate members who have just been mentioned and other expert partners. So thank you to all our donors, individuals, corporate and foundations for supporting the performing arts in this crisis. Um, and we're very much looking forward to now running the crowdfunding campaigns with all the projects and um, building uh, the future for your projects to reach the stage. So a message to our general audience who's watching us um, on YouTube and here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for caring. And we're now really looking forward to receiving your donations as of five euros towards these projects. Everyone can make a difference. Every donation counts and philanthropy starts with you. Thank you so much for being with us today.